Hey guys, how's it going? It's Alpha here, and I'm here to do some of a review of Ducktide. Big thanks to Fat Shark, who opened the beta and let a bunch of random people go and play in the beta. I was lucky enough to be one of the few who got a chance to play in the beta. Before we start, this is going to be a little different. I'm going to try to actually review and give my thoughts about Dark Tide, um, some of the gameplay, some positives, some negatives, and overall my take on it. If you want the funny moments of more of my traditional gaming content, that's going to be coming out later this week with um, funny moments with the beta. So look forward to that. That's the, that's, the, and I think the biggest sum up I can make before this review starts is that Fat Shark understands Warhammer very well and they nailed so much of this game that I think waiting for the game I would be fine if they needed to extend the date again from November to wait for this game because I definitely think it deserves the time and the effort and the passion they're putting into it to make sure it's perfect because they're willing to do that. I'm going to start with the negatives because it's just there's a lot less of them. This game has a lot more positives to me than negatives. The first negative I can think about is the frame rates. While I don't have the greatest PC in the world, I have a halfway decent rig that could run Halo Infinite with no frame drop rate issues at all. And here I was hemorrhaging frames, especially when fire came. When fire came, you just drop frames like a fat man drops a two pound bag of chili dog. Or me eating a Subway sandwich when it's 2 a.m. However, um, when I looked at the data, on average, I was running around 75 frames the whole time. Just normally when we got to combat, um, where there's a lot of fire, a lot of other stuff moving, the game would drop to 60. When you just get into giant mass combat with like hordes is when it seemed to be chugging the most frames going from that 75 to 60 number all the way down to 24 frames per second. So that's the thing they might need to optimize or I might need to optimize my PC a little better. But that's sort of the reason for betas. Their servers um, took me a long time to actually join. However, they seem to work very well while in game, but when you're in the central hub world, you get kicked out quite a bit. But as long as you're not being kicked out during your gameplay, which never happened to me in the whole weekend I played, it was fine. The other thing is it doesn't, the tutorial kind of sucks because they just show you how to fight, but they don't show you where, um, your way to go buy weapons, the way to go buy clothes. I still don't know how to go get clothes after about 14 hours of playing this game. However, all these could be just because I was playing the beta and not actually because I'm playing the full game. However, I would still be a little concerned since it's a closed beta and not a lot of people got access to it. I mean, a lot of people did, but not at the same rate as people would be playing the normal game. As previously stated, um, the servers ran, ran a bit slow, so oftentimes you might just be stuck on a loading screen. Nothing too bad, maybe like 5-10 minutes. 10 minutes is at most pushing it. I've only, only had one time where it was 10 minutes and it turned out I had just timed out. However, when I played, I very rarely had textures pop in or I can't even think of one time in the whole 14 hours of playing that I got one rubber band. Just never happened. So, so it's not that terrible, it's just you're going to feel it sometime. I had no ping issues, I had no hit, going in to hit issues and missing. If I had to summarize sort of it down into little points just to nutshell it for people, I would say the biggest issues are frame rates and servers.
This is why I wanted to get it out of the way because right that's literally the only complaints I have about this game. This was such a fun time to play. If you've played Vermintide or Left 4 Dead or one of the other games, it very much is a spiritual successor to those games. However, it has its own identity and it knows its source material. So this feels like a 40k game. Every single time you swing a weapon, it's visceral and brutal. I would easily put it in the top 10 for this alone for Warhammer games. Um, as always, Dawn of War will leave a special place in my heart, and Space Marine was fun, but this provides such a unique experience that I would almost put it above both of them. It has a unique gothic aesthetic that we haven't really seen in any other games. I mean, like, I mean, we saw a bit of it in Space Marine, but not to the same extent and not to this sort of sprawling internalness of a hive city. And that's where I think a lot of people might complain that it all looks samey because it's all brown and dark grays, black and messy and gritty. But all I have to say is it's grim dark and it's Warhammer. <laughs> eh, I didn't really find light to be an issue very much. Now I was running um, the sharpshooter class who gets an extra flashlight but when I went through and played the other two the other three classes I didn't really see an issue with vision but dark enough to where there's you can there's stuff hiding in the shadows which I think really works for this type of game because it leans into that grim dark aesthetic very and I, I have to specify I I have to specify is that I'm literally like nitpicking the Nick Pickety of Nick Pick 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 Picks. That is how I I am Pickety Pick Pick from Pick Town. Nick Picking right now. <laughs> because this is just so good of a game that to think of anything negative just is really hard because overall I had such a positive experience walking through these halls, walking through these cathedrals. They nailed the aesthetic, they nailed the gameplay. They nailed the personalities of the characters. The only thing I don't know if they've nailed yet, because we don't have access to the full game, is the story. I have no clue what the story is like, but I honestly don't really give a shit about the story after playing it, because it was such a good game to play. It felt good. Going into the characters a bit, by far my favorite operator to play as is easily the sharpshooter. He has to be the best voice line, and no matter what personality he has, he has a pretty cool voice line. The Volgren is probably not lore accurate, but they probably couldn't make it lore accurate. But he is definitely a he takes up the whole hallway. I have a few clips in the Funny Moments video where you're going to be able to see it. Where I go to shoot and it just he fills up the whole hallway. Now, the one thing I'll say is me being a lore nut, it's super weird how Bulgrins can perform actions in the game. Because what will happen is like your computer will mess up and then anybody in the party can go fix the computer. That's for gameplay purposes and it, I, can, I can have a level of dissonance there. Um, for the Bulgrins, but they're really stupid, so they really shouldn't be able to do th They're really stupid in lore, so they shouldn't be able to do that, but for the video game, it's fine. Um, the Zealots was the one I probably spent the least amount of time with, but I, I still got, I still spent enough time to try to learn how their playstyle, and it's a very aggressive playstyle. I think what's really cool about the game is that with these operators you have two that are highly aggressive that like want to be in people's faces and dealing with the hordes which are the Bulgren and the Zealot and if you try to play you could probably tr play those at long range but you're definitely not using them the best if they're long range. They are not as effective long range compared to the Psyker and the Sharpshooter, who when getting into close range, they can play close range, 
but they don't want to play close range. So you can play any playstyle you want with any class you pick, just certain classes lend themselves to certain playstyles. And I'll get into this more in depth in a later series that I'm working on. However, it, the, the thing is their personalities change per, per what you select. So when I selected my sharpshooter, I selected the professional personality, and that's going to give different dialogue lines than somebody who gives um, the loose cannon personality to their character. However, just however, I love the interactions between these characters. They feel like real people interacting with each other, and they're constantly talking, communicating to each other. Not frequent enough that it gets annoying, but frequent enough that you know that these are characters talking. And I can give them some leeway, and because it's a video game that the Psyker might be throwing a few weird dialogue, just like the Zealot. It doesn't need to be 100% because it's a video game, but... Well, I, one of the things that stand out the most to me is when I was walking through one of the maps, I had a tra several trains run over my head, so the world was still moving around me, it's still doing things. It gives this very role of, you're not... This is the issue with like Space Marines, because whenever you're the Space Marine, the story depends on you. You're the one who wins or loses this war. Here you feel almost insignificant. And that, that sounds bad, but it really works for the story in this game. You being a prisoner working for the Inquisition, they're just sending you on missions, on suicide missions. And we're something of a suicide squad, you might say. Yeah, the actors must have just had fun in the booth playing these characters um, after listening to these voice lines. They're amazing voice lines. They've nailed almost every single delivery. I think the Bulgren is actually the best for delivery, whoever voice worked him, but it's just, it's the cream de la creme of voice acting for Warhammer, it's great. I, I think the best way to sum it up for the characters in the game is not one is good, each one lends themselves to a different playstyle, your Ogren's gonna be your tank, your Zealot's gonna be your DPS, the Psyker um, is gonna be more of your headhunter, focus, on like the biggest guy in the room and just let him deal all the damage because if left alone your psycho could literally take out almost anything in the game however it takes a long time to actually perform um psychic abilities in this game so you're gonna need to give him room to do it your sharpshooter is really high offensive but is sort of probably the most spongiest out of all of them. I constantly got like hit to half health using him, but he over all of them has the most capability of inflicting damages because of the las gun and other stuff. And he if he's just sitting there popping heads the whole time, he's easily can clear a horde by himself. It's just keeping that distance. Now I spent the most time in this game as a sharpshooter and I don't regret that because the last rifle is clearly the best gun in the game I don't care what you all say last guns are fucking amazing it's just it's so satisfying to use the last gun has like this snap that it, it, it just it's perfect the shooting sounds perfect your reloading is perfect. The only thing that's annoying is you don't get a bayonet on your last rifle, so you can't just bayonet things. But that's literally, again, another nitpick. This is it's the best gun. It's super fun to use. The only thing that gets annoying with it is that you might mag dump several times into a few enemies that have armor. But that that's just sort of is what it is. You're supposed to find other ways to deal with them. Rely on your teammates to help you out with them. Overall, to bring, to bring this into a conclusion, the gameplay is solid and really tight and amazing. 
and then everything else is sort of what makes it this game because we've seen this sort of game before with the Vermintide in Left 4 Dead, but this game is amazing for 40k players because it is the game that we've been wanting for a while. It feels like it's 40k. The characters feel 40k. The gameplay feels justified. The whole aesthetics feels 40k. The world feels grim dark. The music is just so off the rails amazing. I mean, the main title sequence is really killer. It's something unique in almost feels like a space western music done for 40k. And it blows my mind that it didn't become trash. There's so many 40k games. I mean, Necromunda Hired Gun is something very akin to this, and look at how easily that got screwed up. It blows my mind that Fat Shark was able to pull this game off the way they did and still have it being so good. I just can't wait for the full game to get released and be able to play it with other people. I think it's going to definitely be remembered in the 40k fandom for years to come. Go, three, 